Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be discussing solar financing options. We're getting some emails from you guys, clients that are looking into the solar energy, renewable energy space to maybe put solar panels on your home. And so today I'm with Maureen to discuss your different financing options to really help you figure out which one would be the best for you. And then to get more information along the way, we're going to discuss some action steps towards the end of this video. So you know how to go about getting solar, you'd be fully, fully equipped. So with that being said, hello, Maureen, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Thanks for stopping by and taking the time to really break down these different financing options. Wherever you'd like to start, I want to give you the floor in terms of the, the different options when you lay it out and then I'll put everything on the whiteboard so that people can follow along and take notes. Yeah. So in... As everyone knows, in 2023, financing options are a little bit different than they were last year, and they might be different next year. We don't really know what's going to happen, but regardless of where the market's going and with interest rates, um, the type of options for acquiring solar are basically the same. So there's always a cash option, which I would say less than 5% of people decide to purchase a system cash outright. Similar to think of how many people actually purchase a home outright all cash. Most people do some sort of down payment financing option. Same thing with vehicles too. Even if you're going to own the vehicle, most people will put a down payment and then do some sort of financing or lease option. So Cash is always an option, but the cost of the solar system, then most people will do some sort of financing. And I'll get into leases. I know we can break down leases in a little bit too, but leases are actually pretty cool. I didn't realize how cool they were, but they can actually be a great option for people um, as well to have renewable energy and solar on the home. But in terms of ownership, if you wanted to own your system, 95% of people will go with some sort of financing option, which is always zero down. So the, the company that I work with, that I run all my solar business through, um, we have access to the same solar financing companies that pretty much service the whole renewable energy industry. So those are companies like SunGage, Mosaic, good leap so we have no connections to those but there's five or six major companies across the board so access really to over 140 different financing options and those go anywhere from five year to 25 year options all of them require zero money down so that's one thing I want to really drive home with anyone who's considering going solar there is zero out-of-pocket cost which is one of the blessings of the solar industry. So it costs no money. It doesn't matter who you work with, what solar company, what financing partner, it's always zero down. And then you're essentially taking the money that you would have paid to the utility company and redirecting it now to your solar payment for financing. So that's a, a, a myth I just wanted to bust right away. People think, oh my gosh, I really want to go solar and is it going to cost me a lot of money? Not necessarily, and it shouldn't cost you any money out of pocket. The goal of solar is a good fit for you, and finance is like cost savings is one of the big things you're going for. Then you're essentially saving money because the goal is to have a payment that is less or energy that's costing less than what you're already paying your utility company for. So it's zero down. And then I know we can geek out. I know you put all this stuff up on the whiteboard. But the goal is to choose a loan that is in alignment with your financial strategy. So you can do a 25 year fixed and have a lower payment, but it might have a really high dealer fee. So people can get stuck on, oh, I want the 449 or I want the 559, but they don't understand that there's, if you look at the cash price versus what the loan amount is, there's sometimes these 38% hidden dealer fees. So I'm super transparent and I know you are too, Denzel. So it's like, we break it down. I don't want anyone to ever sign a loan that just looks good on paper, a lower interest rate when they have all these hidden costs. So we have the ability to see transparently like what the dealer fees actually are and what the total loan amount is, because that's what you want to look at. So if you're considering going solar and you have someone doing a proposal in front of you and the monthly payment might look good, or you might think, oh my gosh, that's great. It's a 399, especially with this market. Just pause and ask what the dealer fees are. Look at what the dealer fees are, because there's some cases 
Um, and I know we just helped someone from this community go solar. It was a, a higher interest rate. It's like an 11.99. But her strategy with velocity banking was to pay it off sooner than 25 years. So the, the good thing with a lot of these loans is there's no hidden, um, sorry, not hidden dealer fees. There's no prepayment penalty. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. So you can pay it off sooner than 25 years with no penalty whatsoever. The only thing you're obligated to do is to pay off the total loan amount. So start to look and ask questions. What are the dealer fees? Because a lot of these 11.99s, they actually have no dealer fees or less than 3%. So you're essentially getting a loan amount for the same price as what the cash project is. So you don't have to take your cash. Mm. It's essentially almost like paying cash for a system, but you get the flexibility of paying it over two or three years versus paying it all up front before the system's installed. So you get to figure out, okay, am I going to use my tax credit and throw it there? Or maybe what we've done before is we run the the deal as a a cash deal, um, essentially by using one of these loans and leveraging it. And then someone can go use a personal line of credit, which you've taught them how to do, or use a HELOC and take that and then pay this no deal with the loan off early. So there's lots of strategies that we can use in terms of financing because we just have access to so many different products and that will always change with the market. But the overall goal is the same. It's how can we get solar on someone's home who wants to go solar with no money out of pocket and then figure out what their financial strategy is to, to see which, which loan product to go with at the time. And then are we going to actually use a personal line of credit or HELOC to pay that off? So that's for the, the ownership portion of it. And then I know we can probably go into leases a little bit, but yeah. I'll just you know, redirect it from here. <laughs> Definitely. So let's take it to the whiteboard just to recap. So we'll, we'll focus a lot on the financing because as you said, there's about maybe 5% go here and the, the majority, majority of people are financing. And then I feel like lease is a territory that most people just really don't understand, or they think it's a terrible idea. And, you know, as to your knowledge, like when we were talking off camera, even you didn't really know like the full benefits of it. So we'll, 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 we'll tackle that a little bit later, but for right here, financing is always 0% down. And I wanted to just touch on that a little bit more because I think what's been happening on, on social media with, with marketing is I've been seeing these Instagram reels, TikTok reels, talking about how the government will pay for your solar loan or your solar, how you can get in no money down. And then they'll, they'll kind of bash the, the solar companies that either manufacture the solar panels and then the lending institutions that finance those panels for, for customers, they're making it seem as if those companies are hiding something that they don't want you to know that you can kind of go through the government and, you know, get something. So from your point of view or your perspective, the amount of research you've done so far, is there any truth to that maybe in certain states or is it more of a bait and switch where in reality, you're still going to end up needing a solar manufacturer company to provide the panels to you and then a financing company if you're you no know, putting no money down no money out of pocket and then the government is going to help pay some of that not all of it because there's these tax credits that exist that help with the the pay down of it so i want to just touch on that a little bit so that people have clarity here so that when they're watching tiktok reels instagram then they go through the funnel and then they're like end up in a, in a place where it's a bait and switch yeah oh this is such a good topic i've i've even been curious myself like being in the solar industry and unaware of any programs out there that completely fund solar there has been one client that i've had where he there was a grant for like the city of Philadelphia that was giving away, I think it was like five or six and it was an application process for some sort of case study. And so it had already closed. And after we 
had our time together and went through some options, a neighbor of his said that they might be opening up that option again for his neighborhood in 2024. So he was going to pause and wait to see if he could apply. I couldn't find any detail about that online. I don't, I don't think he's lying. I'm taking his word for it, but that is the only thing I have ever heard of where there's a possibility for some sort of local program that may or may not be more funded than just what the solar industry serves in general. So what I have found is there is a lot of, and this isn't just for the solar industry, right? This is marketing in general. Like there's a lot of bait and switch stuff. There's a lot of things out there where people massage words I've found to make it sound good. Cause I've even called some of these. I've been watching YouTube and there's an uh, or Instagram and there's an ad that says, oh, the government, if you live in these 11 states, don't do anything. Like you could get solar fully. And I'm like, what? How have I never heard about this? I'll go through the funnel and actually be on the phone with someone. And then we've gotten into it sometimes too, because I'm like, how do you even have a job? <laughs> I get angry. Like you're manipulating people. You're lying to them. It's people at some call center. So, and there's a lot of companies out there that do very integrous marketing as well that will sell solar leads to other solar companies. So it's, it's not necessarily the solar company that I found. I think these are right. third party marketing companies that will sell leads to anyone throughout the solar industry. Yeah. And I've done that before growing my business. I wanted to, I thought, okay, I'll invest in a, in a marketing company to get people that are interested in solar and I'll call them. And I have found that on the phone. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't, it wasn't from the solar company that I, or the marketing company that I was using. But you think people are looking for solar, they're probably responding to several different ads. So they would think, I, what do you mean? I thought that it was going to be fully free. And I was like, okay, well, what what did you hear? Or where did you respond to this ad? So there was a lot of cleanup work that I was doing on the phone with some of these people in order to see if I could even help them or not. So from what I know, one, there is no fully paid for solar system with any sort of government program nationwide or statewide. There is a, across the board, 30% federal tax credit available to anyone who wants to go solar through ownership in any of the 50 states. And again, that is a tax credit. So the only way to get that, and you have to be careful, because if you, like when we do our, when I do my proposals, the system that I use will show the total cost of the system, and then it will show the net cost. So the net cost is always 30% less the total cost because of that federal tax credit. Okay. So you have to be careful with that too. Some people will just show the net cost and you may not be eligible for the net cost. Let's say if you are retired and you are no longer paying taxes. So if you are currently W-2, 1099, paying taxes in any form, you are eligible to getting 30% back in the form of a tax credit. So it's not like you're even guaranteed that money. That's between however your taxes are filed, but it is 30% tax credit. There are some states like the state of South Carolina that do an additional 25% state tax credit. So in South Carolina, you can theoretically get 30% federal payment towards your solar system and 25% statewide. So you could have a net cost of only 45%. So that is it. That is all that I know of. And then there's some utility companies in certain states that will do a potential $5,000 rebate, $8,000 rebate. Some utility companies are very supportive of their clients going solar and some are not. So again, that's just, there's thousands of utility companies across the country. So right. that's really individual. And sometimes an awesome bonus, but I wouldn't count on it. Okay. So with that, to be real clear for people listening, that 30% tax credit is based off of your personal tax liability. So if you only have a tax liability one year of 10,000 bucks, like you didn't really make a whole lot of money, it's 30% of that number, or is it 30% tax credit of the balance, the net cost of the solar, not the financing part? but the net cost of the solar? Yeah, good question. So for number's sake, let's say the total cost of the solar system is $60,000. So 
30% of that would be a little bit less than 20,000, right? How do they do that? So just the tax credit would be 30% of that available. So the net cost of their system, they'd be paying 70% of that. So the tax credit would be 30%. All right. So you said $60,000 solar system. Yeah. 30% of that is 18,000. And then, right. and then what happens? Okay. So then, so the net cost, right? When you see on these proposals, whether it's the same software I'm using or someone else that you're considering getting solar from, you'll see, okay, cost of the system, 60 grand tax credit available, 18,000 net cost, $42,000. Mm-hmm. So that's technically what someone will be paying out of pocket over time if they get the tax credit. The tax credit, so let's say someone gets a solar system installed in 2023. So now when you go to file your 2023 taxes, if you're W-2 and you've already paid $18,000 into taxes out of your paycheck for this calendar year, you will actually get a check back from the government when filing your taxes for $18,000. Or God. if you're 99 and you have over $18,000 in taxes that you owe, you don't owe them $18,000 of that money anymore. That's how you're basically keeping $18,000 of your own cash and not having to give it to the government in taxes. All right. So if so in a in a calendar year, so in one calendar year, you paid say 18,000 in taxes, then I'm getting a check. I'm going to I'm going to get a a payment from the IRS. We don't call that a refund though, right? That is just a straight tax credit. There's a difference between a tax credit and a refund. So for those that are, you know, thinking, oh, am I getting refunded? No, no, no. You paid the taxes. Now you're getting credit for paying that because you did this move, not a refund. So if you paid 18 in taxes, then you get 18K back. So it creates a wash essentially. And then that 18K, if used properly, you throw it into your solar system to knock down the principal balance, which is going to dramatically reduce the interest costs, which would go into our strategy, knowing in advance whether or not I want to pay this off fast or I want to ride it out, right? Because you might say, well, I'm going to take this 18 grand and go invest it and get a higher rate of return. Well, now you're taking on risk. So the, the guaranteed type of solution here would be you take that 18K, you throw it right back into the system that got you the 18K to begin with, right? Now, the other option is if you owe 18,000 or more in taxes because you're self-employed as corp, right, your business owner, and you acquired solar panels, then you're able to deduct 18,000 in taxes that you would owe that calendar year. Yes. Right, so if I owe 18K, then I can deduct. And so what would happen there is you would in in this person's this scenario you already have the 18,000 in your checking account or your savings account you're about to pay the taxes but now you no longer have to pay the taxes same situation take the 18k make a lump sum payment to your solar panel to bring it back down to the the net actual cost of what you're going to be financing the rest of that payment outside of your normal payments that's what you would actually be financing or if you want to be this person that says you know what my solar panels are at a low rate or maybe a higher rate i think i can earn a higher rate of return than what i'm paying in interest so i'm gonna take this 18k and i'm gonna go build my business and you know double my income okay well there's risk to that evaluate the risk if you want to take on that kind of a risk and guarantee yourself a pathway to you know debt freedom no payments on that asset that's on your roof, right? And then your energy costs remains uh, extremely low all throughout those years at a, at a fixed cost. So that's the breakdown of the tax credit. And then as you said, there's another state tax credit, but that's only in one state that you know of so far. Um, yeah, and it changes. Right now, I know that's okay. that South Carolina. The one thing I will add, because I get this question a lot, so I think it'd be helpful if you break it down maybe on the whiteboard too, is people say, okay, well, I haven't paid um, $18,000 in taxes, I'm W-2. So then what happens? I only paid $4,000 in taxes. So they actually give you 10 years 
to redeem that full 30% federal tax credit. So let's say your tax liability is only $4,000 a year, you will essentially get it $4,000 back in 2024, another 4,000 back in 2025, another 4,000 back in 2026, all the way until you redeem that full $18,000 in the tax credit. So I think that would be five years for if for someone, yeah. So, and then the same thing with, if you're 1099, it's 4,000 less you're paying that year in taxes. So you're keeping 4,000 of your own money and so on. So you will get the opportunity to have the full 30% federal tax credit redeemed. It just, depending on your tax liability, might not all happen in the first year. Okay, so with that, I want to break down the the business model for the solar industry so that people have that awareness of what the what the process looks like so that they don't get kind of tricked into these different marketing schemes that are out there. It's like you end up working with a third party that A, may not even understand the product, mm-hmm. and then when it comes to actual installation, you could end up with something that may not fit your actual needs. And even though maybe you paid less than the competitor, but you ended up with a system that doesn't actually match what you need to create that offset. And that's a big thing too. So we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that, but let's talk about the different components. So I, I know that obviously there's the, the solar manufacturer, right? That builds the solar panels and there's a bunch of different companies. I'm, I'm assuming throughout the United States that build these solar panels. Then the manufacturers, they know how to build. They don't know how to market. So they need a marketing company. And that's where you get the misrepresentation that'll happen here is what I'm assuming. So you have marketing companies, or we can call them third party agencies. And it's essentially like a sales force. Would you agree with that? So then the marketing company, all they do is sell, educate the client, right? If it's done properly, like you do, you present the product, educate them, take them through a process. Now the marketing company needs an installation, right? Or we can call that installer, right? Mm -hmm. These are the people that actually put the panels on your roof. That's when you actually see the tangible product coming to your to your home yes. is there and then there's obviously the the overseer of all this the, the government which provides the the regulations issues the permits the approvals right yeah is there any other department that we could be missing here or is yeah, this pretty all, much what it is also the utility companies a utility company there you go yeah. Sometimes those are government, sometimes those are privately held, sometimes those are little tiny co-ops. Um, every state and city is a little bit different, but yeah, we are dealing with the, um, what I call the product partner. So that would be the manufacturer. Then right. we're dealing with the, the companies that are actually doing the installation and the education and the sales and the project management. And though that's different, there are some companies that are in-house that do all of it, like little local mom and pop solar companies that will, you know, produce a certain product, also do their own installations, also have their own internal sales force, also do their own, you know, warranties and overseeing. So they'll do everything. They're kind of like the, uh, the general contractor, but they're using everything in house. Then there's other companies that will be more like a general contractor and use the best of all of it and oversee it. So someone hires them just like they would hire someone to build a house for them. And that person will go and source all the best materials, the best crew to do the installation. They'll oversee the project management. They'll handle all the permits. They will support with, you know, financing, um, they they oversee everything, which is the situation I'm kind of in, like the the general con- contractor position, uh, versus everything being in house with uh, manufacturing and just like a one company. Um, but then the utility companies and the the government that's always outside. So whether you hire like a general contractor sort of option or a local in house mom and pop, they we've all got to deal with the local utility and government regulations and permits the same way. Gotcha. Awesome. So thank you for providing that uh, overview here. So recapping, this is the the business model of those that are listening that are going to go through a process, whether you work with Maureen or someone else, these are the different components. 
So there, there is no other opportunity where someone says, yeah, listen, you, you're not going to have to pay for anything, no money out of pocket, and the government's going to pay for it all. So what they're actually saying is the government has this tax credit standard across the board, and that will change over time as it has changed over time. And, and that is the breakdown of how it lowers your cost, but doesn't completely remove it. Now, if someone here knows of a grant program, see, that's where I was like, when I, when I heard you say that, I was like, okay, there might be something there where the a specific city, county, state might put together some kind of a grant program for homeowners to get solar. But again, I doubt they're paying the whole thing, right? You need some skin in the game, right, to, to afford this. So again, anybody knows this, comment below if you know of a certain grant program and you have to give us the website, the breakdown has to be legit, everything. And I will we'll come back, Maureen and I will make videos, we'll do our due diligence and then correct ourselves if there is something out there. But as we know right now, we don't know of anything outside of that 30% tax credit, which is federal, and then a state tax credit as well. So that's an additional potential savings. Outside of that, that's all we got. There is something just while we're on this topic quickly that is, is coming more and more. I know Denzel, you've probably seen it because of where we live. But there's a lot of solar companies now that are doing like a membership. I'm not sorry, not solar companies, utility companies now. Correct. That doing like community solar. So it's almost like a, a co-op where they're starting to invest in solar farms. So you may live in a place where you have a utility company that is starting to say, hey, you know, if you want to go in and do this monthly membership subscription to subsidize a part of your uh, electric um, bill that you have with them or a portion of it. They might not guarantee the entire amount, but they say you want to go green and help the environment. You can have a portion of your electricity usage every month coming from our new solar farm. And to participate, there might be an application process. You might It might be like a monthly subscription that they're guaranteeing a certain rate for. So those are popping up. And those are awesome. Look, I'm all about renewable energy and saving the planet. So if you live in an apartment or you live in a place where you can't even own a solar system and you're going to be able to save money and go green and participate in some of these community solar uh, projects with your utility company, that's great. Also be careful, though, because someone that um, actually we're helping, Denzel, from, from your community, she is the first time I had heard of it. She has a co-op which is a great utility company in Texas that she has her utility service through. And she said, oh, I actually own five solar panels through, through the utility company. So I was like, okay. So I called them on the phone. Doesn't actually own them, own them, own them, but she has access to a locked in rate of five panels in their solar farm. So I thought, okay, great. And that was the maximum amount that she was allowed to purchase or subscribe to. So then I said, okay, well, I don't want to design you a system that is going to be over producing more than the or is producing the normal amount, because I still wanted her to be able to benefit from the lower rate from the five community panels she already has. So I thought, okay, in my, in my brain, I thought it'd be great to design a system that's half the normal size. So she's basically producing on her own roof, the leftover of what she's not getting from this community solar farm. Okay. But the utility company said, unfortunately, you can't do both. So she will lose her rights to the solar farm if she puts solar on the roof. But the good news is that she wasn't locked in. She didn't really own it. She just said that she, so it really, it was a monthly subscription she was paying for to get five panels worth of electricity at 11 and a half cents a kilowatt versus the 14 cents she's currently paying them. So it's still going back. I did the math. It's still going to be in her best interest to go completely solar on her roof to pay for owning that system and then to just get out. They'll just let her out of the community solar option. So lots yeah. of different options out there, but that's another thing that's popping up too is just this community yeah. solar solar subscription with utility companies. Gotcha. So community solar subscription service for renters, maybe people living in condos, maybe people living in HOAs where they don't allow it or something like that, or there's a, a tree covering your um, 
home or a big apartment building nearby that's too much shade that you can still get involved. So those community uh, solar farms that are definitely popping up, subscription service. But to be clear that to your point, see, we, we think, we, we, we say things and that can sometimes confuse people because based on whatever marketing was told to her, right? So she was saying that, oh, I own five solar panels, all right? It's like, mm, no, you don't. You're <laughs> subscribed to a service that gives you access to something. The moment you cancel that service, you no longer have access. So to be clear here, there's no ownership here unless you invested in the solar farm itself and the government is your client. That's different. And that's an opportunity for people too that maybe farmers, maybe have big land. You're like, you know what? Uh, shoot, let me build a solar farm here and then the government can be my client. Uh, so that's a, a totally different conversation. But if for those that are looking to own the solar, own your energy, right? And figuring out the best way to finance it, you know, we've done a pretty good job just breaking down everything so far. So coming back to the, the, the financing here, now that we went through the business model, went through the tax credit, the alternatives, we have the cash option, the lease option, we'll get into that. Discussing the financing of 0% down, you mentioned there's about five to six major uh, lending institutions out there that work with the manufacturer to deliver the product so that the customer can pay for it. Because as you said, not too many people have cash uh, out of their pocket to buy these things out, right? And you can set terms anywhere from five years to 25 year terms. Uh, and this is the option the majority of people go through. If you were to choose a low rate combined with a long term, that would equal a very, very high dealer fee. And what Maureen can do for you is run the math between both options and match that with your your plan. Like what is your strategy? What is your goal with solar? So what is your goal is a question we need to solve for, right? What's your goal? Let's say it's pay off ASAP as fast as possible. If that's your plan, you probably don't want a low rate. Why? Because you're gonna have this additional high dealer cost that could add an extra 30 plus percent, you said, right? 30, 38? Some plus. of them are eight percent right now it's crazy yeah so it's a so you're saying if the if the system it's like the cost of the solar panels itself cost 50 grand what you're saying is add 30 percent to the 50. oh yeah the, so the cash price would be fifty thousand, and then right. someone would say oh look at but i really want this my credits basically if you have a credit score above 650 all of these companies are willing to to work with you gotcha. so they're excited. They qualify for a loan. We're looking at it and they say, wait a second, why aren't you clicking on the, the 449? Why are you going down to the 1199? I'm like, watch, watch what happens to the amount that you're going to have to borrow. So that 50 grand will turn into, you know, like a $75,000, $80,000 loan. And now they're responsible for that. They've almost, well, it's maybe a little bit higher. They have one and a half times the cost of their project with this lower interest rate. So they think they're getting a good deal, but these finance companies are really making a lot of money with mm -hmm. these dealer fees. Now, the here's where the marketing comes into play, the education piece. The marketer, the sales agent, is going to typically be incentivized to do one of these two things more than the other would you say that there is a higher commission on the lower rate options with the with a long term and a high dealer fee i'm sure that they get some sort of percentage of the total loan amount because mm -hmm. you're you're liable to pay off the whole loan whether you pay it in a year or 25 years so I don't know enough about how all the companies work on the back end with with how everyone gets paid, but that would be my assumption that they are. It's it's obviously beneficial for these people to figure out how can we make it look good so people have a lower payment that may or may not be less than their current utility payment. So they think, okay, we'll slide under the radar on paper. It looks good. Their monthly payment for solar is less than they were paying for their utility company anyway. Most people don't read the fine print and they don't even realize that they are, you know, almost paying twice as much for their, their cash price solar system because no one explained it to them. Yeah. So what ends up happening is as, you know, when you're in the marketing and the sales and you're getting all these leads and you're serving people, your majority of people are not paying attention to the 
overall cost of the project. They're just looking at monthly payment. How can you bring my monthly payment less than what I'm paying right now for my electricity? The, um, the, the agent is going to finesse and finagle because there's so many different things that you can do to like basically make it work for them. So if you did a lower rate, stretched out the, the term, but now they have this huge, you know, loan amount total, they're actually going to end up paying more. And I think you could argue that the, the, the solar consultant, the solar energy professional is getting a higher commission on the total balance than if they would have educated them, took a, an extra meeting or so to show them the what better options when they look at it for the long term. Because it, this is a long term investment. It's a long term project. It's a long term return on your investment. You're going to have these things on your roof for literally two, three as long as you stay in that home. So you want to make sure you're making a long-term decision in the short term, right? Like in the moment you're in right now, you want to make sure you're thinking long-term with a project like this. What do you want to add? Well, I just reminded me, you know, before I was in the solar space or technically in a sales or consulting role, I just remember going to get my first car when I was in my early 20s and like car salesman, right? Just so like, think about, just put yourself in this position if you're going to consider going solar or maybe you've made a big purchase before where they say, we say, well, how much does it cost? And they say, well, how much do you want to pay every month? Because they know on the back end they can finagle stuff. So if the salesperson knows, okay, I've got them, as long as they say they want to be paying less than $300 a month, they on the back end can do all sorts of things to manipulate sales, call, whatever. Do they just, you know, oh, I'll give them a, you know, and a 10 year term or a seven year term on their car loan, but I can get the payment down to less than $300 a month. So it's easy for people to feel comfort with that monthly payment. And they're not, they're not um, thinking whole picture, big picture, they don't have the knowledge to know what questions to ask. Another thing, which can be a huge topic in and of itself, but just to mention here is I've seen a lot of consultants, salespeople, or solar people do something similar and they know the goal is a certain payment. So the way that they get someone to have a payment of less than $300 a month is they significantly undersize the solar system that that home actually needs. So I heard that a lot. People say this solar thing was terrible. It was a terrible investment. I still have a utility bill that I'm responsible for every single month because my system is not producing. So now I have this $300 a month or $200 a month solar payment, but they're still paying an electric bill every single month because their system is not making as much electricity as their home actually uses. And so I've seen this happen a lot with these, um, I don't want to say door knockers because it's there's great door knockers and terrible door knockers, just like great, great cold callers and terrible ones. So um, where someone will get maybe four or five quotes because there's been a bunch of people coming through the neighborhood. And so naturally they think, I'm going to go with the lowest quote, right? This yeah. person is going to give me the best deal, but they don't realize that the reason that this quote is half the cost as a quote that someone else gave them because if they look side by side, they're actually, maybe I can pull up this, I don't know if this is a good time to pull up this slide of a, a system, just to give an example. But here we have a home, and I'm gonna go back right here and see, this is how much electricity, the reason a solar consultant will need to look at your electric bill, we're not looking at the cost right now, I'm just showing you this usage. We'll look over a 12 month period of time, I can, add up exactly how many kilowatts a year that home is consuming. So therefore, if you add this all up, it's around 29,000. And I'll call, some of these graphs are hard to estimate. Not every utility company will show the full month. They'll just show month each month, but not a year. So a good solar consultant that really wants to serve the homeowner We'll call the utility company say, I am the solar consultant working with this family. Can you please provide me accurate kilowatt hour usage over the last 12 months? So you total that up. Then you go to whatever designing plat platform you have access to as a solar consultant. And you say, okay, great. Here's the home. 
Are there huge trees that are preventing? Like, is this home even a good candidate for going solar? Do they have enough sunlight? Is the roof in the right direction? Okay, great. This is a perfect candidate for solar. So now we need to figure out how many panels are going to go on the roof that are going to generate that amount of annual production that they need to be completely self-sufficient in terms of this home, this solar system on this roof is producing what this home uses on an annual basis. So the system size is this, it's going to produce exactly how much they need every year based on what their utility bill says. And so this home with this system, if the homeowner doesn't change their usage, will no longer have a utility bill anymore because their solar system will be producing 100% of their consumption. But someone else could have said, oh, well, my system's a lot cheaper. But if you were to look at the two systems side by side, they may have, you know, this one has 52 panels. There might be another person that designed a system for them with 40 panels. Well, of course, it's going to be less. But now in two years, this homeowner is going to be really upset because they may have a smaller solar payment to pay off their financing with this company. But they're only producing 20,000 kilowatt hours a year. And so they're still having to rent 10,000 kilowatts a year from their utility company to meet all of their electric needs. So hopefully that made sense. I just thought that was a good time to discuss. No, that was a very good deep dive there. And I think it's extremely important for people to, this was just an analogy because you had brought up the car thing before and you're not buying something nice to look at so so this is important for people to understand it's like you're not you're not uh you know buying based off how it looks you're buying it based off how this thing is going to perform so it doesn't have to look pretty right the 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 solar panels don't have to be pink they just need to perform and you get the job done so it's purely based off performance if performance means higher price you need to really pay attention to that and then we go to the financing part and we say to ourselves you actually need to be negotiating the price of the entire panel not the payment and to make that make sense for people most people do buy cars and most people when they go into the the car dealership you're negotiating the payment when in reality you should be negotiating the msrp what did the dealership get that car for what are they selling that price to you So if it's a $35,000 MSRP vehicle, you need to know something called cap cost. You need to know how far we can bring that actual cost of the vehicle down as to what you're buying it for. So if you get it down to 29,000, now you have a much bigger difference in, in payment. So if you negotiate MSRP before payment, you in return affect the payment and it would be less. Same goes in this particular situation here. If we're looking at how do I acquire solar panels that will do the job that it needs to do on my home according to my consumption, right? And then also keeping in mind, do I want to have electric vehicles in the future? I need to have a system that can also handle the charge of those cars that I may or may not get in the future. So you have to keep that in mind as well. And then this also is a really good example of, you know, if a home produces 20,000 kilowatt hours in a year of production, should you have a system that produces 20,000 or should it be like 21,000 or like a little bit more, right? So that's important too to keep in mind because the your your energy might increase if you, let's say, expand your family, right? So maybe you're living in a four bedroom, three house four three or five two whatever it is and right now there's three of you in the house and if you have another child that's going to increase consumption energy consumption you want to keep that in mind as well these are all the different things that a really good energy consultant would would know and be aware of and not just focused on how much money that they can make and how much money they can save you like there's a balance in these different things which is super super important so yeah, if I actually want to, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say a really good energy consultant will do exactly that. They'll, they'll sit down with you and ask you, are you going to add a pool? Are you doing any additions? Are you planning on getting any electric vehicles? Is there anything that you're going to do that you already know, um, you know, or, uh, 
is going to increase your energy consumption. Electric vehicles also can install even electric vehicle chargers with the solar system. Um, but then another thing, and every utility company is a little bit different. Some are very, very strict with the amount of overage that they allow for a system to be right. designed. So I always find, I always tell people if you're comfortable throwing an extra panel or two on for some cushion, even if they're not planning any additions or um, getting an electric vehicle, because what I have found too, and I'll tell them like a lot of people get utility bill amnesia. <laughs> they think, oh, this is so great. I have the solar system. And now the husband and wife that used to fight over the thermostat being at a certain thing or you know, yelling at all the kids to keep the lights off all the time people get really comfortable with the fact that they're not paying a utility bill anymore. And so over time, it might go up just a little bit with maybe they're not so great about turning the lights off all the time, or they get to actually enjoy the air conditioning in the summer a couple degrees lower than they would have before when they really were dealing with some discomfort because they didn't want to pay the increasing you know, electric bill from the utility companies. So yes, make sure that you're working with the solar consultant that can walk you through current usage and future usage and is taking that into account. And if you're able to just ask them to throw an extra, see what the numbers are with an extra panel on or an extra uh, two panels on, if your utility company allows 105 to 110% offset, just take a look at what those numbers and price down breakdown might be because it might be serving you in the long term and could provide just like extra comfort. You know, think about would I have my thermostat a couple degrees less than I do now if I knew I wasn't having to pay increasing inflation for it over time? Or would I have the, the lights on more? Is there something you would be doing just habit wise, even if there's nothing that you're going to plan on um, adding in terms of an extension or a pool or a hot tub or an electric vehicle. Gotcha. So with that, let's take it back to the whiteboard here to discuss how we pay off the solar panel system that you would acquire for those that are, that are in the process right now. We can now discuss the, the payoff piece. We talked about the, the financing and really the, the two major decisions that you're, you're pretty much going to make is you're either going to go with a low rate or you're going to go with a higher rate. And then there's, you know, an in-between. But I think if, if I was doing, if I was getting solar panels, I'm probably going to go with the highest rate or a higher rate than normal and get as low of a dealer fee as possible. And when I finance, right, I can then leverage another tool. We can incorporate velocity banking at this point. If I have some sort of a, a, a tool such as a HELOC, personal line of credit, or credit card, or even a policy, whole life insurance, I could borrow the capital that I have and make big chunk payments on the solar panels if I don't want to part with my cash right away. I could leverage OPM in this example, bank's money or money that I build in a cash value life insurance policy over a period of time, self-finance. So you're basically getting a financing option that is right about the same as what your cash price would be for the panels. Because some people are like, all right, I got the money. Let me just pay cash, which is going to be the lowest option, right? It's going to, that's going to be the cheapest option for me to go. Problem with that is once you've sent your cash out, it's it's gone. That doesn't come back, right? You'll get a you'll get a credit. So you get some money back. You don't get all that money back. If you wanted to retain your cash and liquidity, you might want to consider one of these options in terms of the offset of using your own money, where it's like we could use the bank's money first, remain liquid in case on the journey of becoming debt free on the journey of paying off your solar panels and other debts if emergencies come up life happens i still have liquidity so that's important to know as well for those of you who do have the cash you're like hmm high interest rate high inflation high taxation environment devaluation of the currency all these other things this is where you're now stepping into my world we've been in maureen's world in terms of the financing the model the credits the different options now shifting it to how we actually pay these things off, you're probably gonna do much better with a higher rate, longer term, low dealer fee, almost zero dealer fee to get right around the, the cash price. And then we could velocity bank it ourselves, 
because that higher rate is more than likely going to be higher than our rate on our debt tool that we would use that we'd be paying less interest but meanwhile retaining liquidity and capital all all the way through so that's something to you know keep in mind i won't go too deep there i know we'll definitely have a another collab together where we we do a a, a, like a real case study where we analyze a person's option we kind of map out the debt pay down of the solar panels itself so that is financing you can schedule a call with maureen to discuss this in detail right have a conversation look at all the different options and then make a decision right instead of getting sold into something or thinking short term in terms of what's the cheapest smallest payment i can get not realizing that you end up paying more in the long run Right. So now I'd love to transition and discussing leases, what that looks like. So I'm going to race the board of what we discussed so far and just create some space to discuss leasing and what that looks like and why someone would choose leasing over owning their solar panels. Pros and cons to that. Let's dive into that. Yes. So leasing is a great option. One, if we go back to what we discussed about, you know, marketing and how there's some clever stuff out there saying, oh, the government's going to pay for your whole thing. Or um, we now know it's only 30% that the federal government will pay across the board if you have a tax liability. So then what happens to people that are retired or limited income or are on disability? They are not actively W-2 or 1099 filing taxes every year. And so we know that the the lower cost of ownership that's available to most people is not available to them. So that can be a great option, especially also now too with the, the way that interest rates are and a lot of these financing options with these renewable energy financing companies. Um, if, if someone's primary goal is to save money which I have found is a majority of people considering solar. There are some people out there who just, you know, I have the money. I don't really care how much it costs. Even if I have to do $20,000 worth of tree removal or something, I'm just all about sustainability, renewable energy. I don't want to be feeding the dirty grid anymore. My primary motivation for going solar is energy independence. I want batteries. I want storage. And I just want clean. I want off the grid, right? So we're having a different conversation with that person. But right. most people, their primary motivator is I would like to save money and hedge against inflation in this unpredictable kind of wherever, you know, the, the cost of electricity is going and yes, it's also a nice perk to know that I'm helping the planet at the same time. So with leases, it's possible for someone to have a 25 year lease with, let's say Sonova is one of the companies that I work with. There's a couple other now leases that, that, that I have the ability to do work with for clients, but that's a, that's one I did recently. So case study is someone in Florida. She's a woman retired from Comcast, 74 years old. Her current FPL bill that she was paying is almost $500 a month. And she's thinking, how in the world am I going to continue to pay this? Because next year we know it's probably going to be more. Utility companies are increasing the cost of electricity and her income's not increasing at all. And so that's really scary for her. Well, ownership's also not in her best interest because she's not to be morbid, but probably thinking she's not even going to be around for the lifetime of, you know, that loan and to even pay it off. She doesn't qualify for the tax credit and she um, doesn't have the money to, you know, move. She's going to be in that house, probably will it to her kids and all that stuff. So with a, with a lease, I was able to get her a payment of less than $300 a month. So she's never for the rest of her lifetime going to have a utility bill less than $300 a month, unless she changes her usage, right? If she just keeps living her life the way that she's living it, her bill is going to be more than $300 a month staying with FPL. So now we're looking at if she wants to go solar. I can't get her a loan where she has a payment less than $300 a month. It's just not possible. Even right. the lowest cooler fee, it just, it just doesn't work that way. And she doesn't have the cash to drop on a system like that. So, but a lease 
where the company, let's say Sonoba, they're the ones that are guaranteeing production. They're going to be doing the warranty. They're going to be servicing it. So think of it, if you ever leased a car and the lease that you had included maintenance, included the oil changes, included all that. So you're saying, okay, I'm basically going to do a three-year lease with this car company, um, but I'm going to drive a nice new car the whole time, pretty much. I'm not responsible for maintenance. I can go whenever the light's on. I don't have to worry about any other out-of-pocket costs. I know they're going to do the oil change and whatever. And then uh, what I get is this beautiful running car for the next three years. And then at the end of three years, then I can figure out, do I want to roll it in, whatever. But for that period of time, you know that you're going to have a car that is maintained, serviced, is going to be running and operating. Leases are essentially the same thing. So she can, for the next 25 years, be in a lease with Sonova. We can get a much lower rate than we would with ownership through a financing company. And Sonova will be the one that makes sure that it's producing the number of kilowatts that the offer is signed off on when it's designed. So going back to the picture that I showed earlier, if you wanna pull that up again, yeah, and before we do that, I'm just going to recap real quick. So the example, this case study we're looking at is real life. We're in the in state of Florida, and we have someone that went with a 25-year fixed term payment, right? Fixed payment, less than 300 bucks. They were with FPL paying nearly 500 So there's already a, a net positive cash flow savings there. And when we're dealing with those who are in retirement and we're looking for ways to really hedge against inflation, reduce costs of living. This is a very unique way to approach that that can help with your retirement income, your social security, your pension, 401k, like an extra two, three hundred dollars that you don't know, no longer have to think about that's back into your economy. That's that's very beneficial and that can be used towards debt payoff and other things to continue to redirect cash flow. So that's just something I want to throw out there that I see. And when you lease services provided, guaranteed production, installation, they do everything. They monitor the panels. So we're talking about like, especially if you're in your 70s and 60s, the the maintenance of your solar panels, I'm, I'm assuming as those who own solar panels, I'm assuming there's some sort of responsibility that you need to kind of like be aware of, I'm assuming, to a, to a degree as to like making sure those things are operating accordingly. Whereas with the lease model, maybe there's, you know, over the years, people come through to check them, inspect them, make sure if the, you know, if there was a storm that came through or if solar panels got damaged for whatever reason, they'll replace it. And I'm assuming if something happened and it damaged your roof, then they protect your roof as well. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. With yeah, lease. with the lease and with um, a, a good a good solar company and consultant also for the ownership and financing should be working with like for example we do thirty year warranties that in, that includes roof penetration for ownership but our our company doesn't when we do a lease for someone it is on the burden of Sonova to take care of that so either way it should be taken care of yeah if you're working with a good company that is doing a lease or a PPA, or if you're working with a company that is offering ownership, you should make sure that you're getting a really good across the board 25 to 30 year warranty that is going to guarantee the, um, you know, they all have manufacturer warranties on that, but you want an additional, like, this is going to make sure that the system is efficient. Also, depending on the product partner, like if you have an end phase or solar edge inverter that you're using or certain panels, all of those come with really cool apps too. So you'll be able to actually see on an app how much your system is generating. If you have a battery, is it going into the battery? How much is going back to the grid? So either way you can have some involvement, but yes, in terms of the leases, it's just up a level even more because with the leases, what they're doing is they're not just guaranteeing that the system works, they are guaranteeing you're leasing the amount of production. So when we write um, an offer, like if we go back to this home, because this is actually one that I did, uh, uh, ended up doing a lease for because we went through all these different options. So you can see here, 29,806 kilowatts. This is the system that was designed. So when we got Sonova to agree to install this system, 
with their installers and to carry this lease, their responsibility is, okay, my client is going to pay them the payment every month that we agreed on. And their responsibility in return is over the course of the next 25 years, they get to do whatever they need to do to make sure that the system is producing that much every single year. So that's their guarantee to her. They technically own it, but they are maintaining it and making sure that it is going, they monitor it. They also monitor it to see how much it's producing. So if something were to happen and it starts to drop down to 27,000, well, they need to do whatever they need to do to make sure that it is going to be producing essentially what she signed up for in the beginning over the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about an example. This makes total sense for someone who's you know older in retirement. But let's say after a period of time, this woman graduates Earth, wills the parent, wills the house, everything over to the to the children. Does the does the lease end when the person passes, or does it continue? It will be transferred over to the new homeowner. Okay, that's so that's let's an say let's say there's there was pass away, but there's five years left on the term, right? So she went 20 years into it, lived a long life, and then there's about five years left on, on the lease. So it would transfer over to her kids. Those were maybe five years. It could transfer over to the, the person who's acquiring the home. If someone was an estate, there's no one else. From what I understand, I, I don't want to say across the board with leases because I think it's case by case because there's some small mom and pop that do leases and PPAs. Right. This is just a bigger one. This is a company that I have personal experience with that I continue to serve clients with because I think it's sometimes a great option. Um, it's from everything that I've gathered with them, it is, it's forgiven. It's just, you know, if someone were to pass away and there's no inheritor, someone that wants to take over the lease or it goes in, they're not going to come after next of kin or people in some sort of estate that are beneficiaries to pay off debt gotcha. with it. So, so let's say kids take it over they're in the house now um five years go by term expires now what happens to those panels yeah so this is kind of another cool perk about leases that i didn't realize is um you know when i was talking to someone from sonova about different options towards the end essentially at the end of 25 years there's a couple different options number one is they come take the system off. Lease is done, it's like turning a car back in. Like it's been great and I'm out. I don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're free and clear of anything having to do with solar, they'll remove it, pay for all that. Second option is ownership. Oops. And it's ownership, <laughs> ownership by default. Because if you think about it, it's probably more cost effective for them to just leave the system on your roof than to come take it off. So just like, yeah. for example, uh, that would be there, like a lot of work to right. remove. You, you got to hire a team to come in, take all the solar panels away. So you're saying that a company like Sonovo is like, yeah, if you want it, it's all yours. But now they're no longer guaranteeing production. Right? It doesn't come with a warranty, so it doesn't. But most solar systems last. Like, well, like our our uh, warranty that we do um, when we sell systems and have people do financing or if they want to pay cash. When our company does ownership. Uh, we have a 30 year warranty. 30 so years. most solar systems last way beyond 30 years. So your system's going to last if you have ownership over it now. But again, you're not guaranteed production. So you may want to figure out how to get warranty or something. The third option is they will allow a renewal for five years and then five years again. But you're thinking, why would I renew it if I already own it? Essentially, what you're now paying for is the production guarantee, right? Mm. So now you're, it's like adding, extending the warranty. So you're- Would my payment of, let's say $300, would that increase when I renew, I'm assuming? What I understand right now, if you were to extend it, it's the same rate that was locked in. And there's a couple different. Wow. So um, how Sonova works right now, and we can look at the numbers, it's kind of like with the different financing options, right? There's a 0% escalator where it's locked in. It's the same exact payment for the next 25 years. It's not going to change. It might be a little bit higher than a 2.9% escalator where you know, okay, my payment's going to be 250 a month right now and it's going to go up 2.9 percent every year for the next 25 years but the the proposals are really awesome i mean you can see exactly what every single payment is going to be for the next 
300 months. Okay. And what the total output's going to be too. So you can figure out math wise. Obviously, it's always cheaper to do the 0% escalator over time, but some the people. be higher, right? Payment's going to be higher initially, but some people are really struggling right now. Like if their utility bill, like the, having the cost savings of 50 bucks a month right now is what some people really need, even if it's a yeah. little bit more. But we can break down all those numbers. What I love about these proposals is it's very transparent. So you know exactly, you know, um, what the total output of is over the next 25 years. And that's the cool thing. If you were to estimate with some of these proposal tools, what they do is, you know, okay, you're paying FPL $500 a month right now, but what are you going to be paying them over the next 25 years with a very conservative 4% annual inflation? So you're thinking, okay, holy cow, I'm going to be paying FPL or my utility company $250,000 in electricity usage over the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I go on this 25 year loan or lease, cause people think, well, I want to lease something. I want to own something. Well, guess what? You don't own your electricity now anyway. Mm -hmm. So now you're renting it from another company. And instead of paying $250,000 for electricity coming from the grid, you're now paying $120,000 over the next 25 years to Sonova to have clean energy produced from your roof. Either way, you don't own it during that period of time, but this is still saving you a significant amount of money. Correct. And then at the end of that, you can own by default, you can say that was fun, get it off my roof, or you can renew for five years and then another five years at that same lower rate. Gotcha. Would the price of the solar panel be less when it comes to paying for it? Just like when I lease a vehicle, the buyout price is a certain amount. Would would that be the same with solar panels? Would there be a set buyout price when the lease ends for ownership? When the lease ends, there's no buyout price. It's yours if you don't want them to come take it off. You so, own it by default. But it's just oh, it's, you own it. Okay, okay. You to fix it to mm -hmm. maintain it to something else. So you have operating Which it. At that point, I can go back to a, a Sonovo or, or, or someone to get some insurance on the solar panels, some protection. That's exactly what the renewal is. So if you're, they, they can it. off, right? Or they can leave it, or you can renew your lease for another five years. But you're saying, why would I pay them if I technically own it by default? What you're essentially paying for is another guaranteed five years of maintenance and production and you can do that twice right you can do as of now the way it is now it's two more five-year terms available so five and then another five or another option too is you just have a completely new system designed and another 25 year one you know at that point too but we don't know what the future is going to hold right yeah. now because if so you were to have come take it off, you know, and not go with option, you know, two or three, then you, uh, you know, if leases are still available, then you could just have another system completely designed. Okay. So you're saying that they could come in, take these old panels off, put brand new ones on. Here's another 25 years. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, you're done with a, a car that you're leasing. You can, you know, Get maybe brand new panels, baby. Yeah. That works too. Yeah, I might yeah, actually, I'm done with this car. I want a brand new, you know, 2025 BMW and lock me into that for the next, you know, five years. That is really cool. So services provided with a lease guarantee production. It's a fixed payment less, more than likely less than what you currently pay with FPL. So we're trying to shoot for a savings there. And then after the 25 years is done, you, you basically own it by default. Mm-hmm where at that point you need to now maintain it. So now it's self maintenance and that, you know, would come with costs like, okay, I need to replace a panel. I need to fix this, right? That's one option. Or you renew for another five years and, you can, and currently you can do it twice, right? You can do it two times. So you can buy yourself another 10 years with, of, of guaranteed service and guaranteed production and fixed payment. I'm assuming the payment would change after in that five year renewal? Or I'm not stay the same? I, I don't know, to be honest. I'm assuming it would be the same. Um, like if they got a 0%, it could be renewed at that 0%. But if they had a 2.9 escalator, it would continue to increase to that 2.9%. Got it. Got it. 
Got it. Anything else you want to add here? We've covered so much today uh, in, the, in this session here. This is master class on solar financing options. And this will get broken up for people to like really pick what they want to listen to. Um, but there's anything else you want to add here that we might have missed? I think we covered a lot. I think it's so good. I think solar is the, the biggest thing for people to understand is solar is amazing, but it really is so individual and case by case. So your home might not even be a good fit. You know, you might be living in a place where um, your home might be a good fit and your utility company is not even going to allow you to go solar or they're not going to offer net metering. You know, you could be... Um, but let's just say you live in a place that gets enough sunlight, you have enough of your roof that's exposed, you know, to sun that will, that's facing in the right direction. That's a, just going to be able to produce what your home actually needs to. Um, because there are some people that live in townhouses where there are those, like the shoe box lots, you know, where it's like three stories and they have a family of six and they're using 20,000 kilowatts a year of electricity, mm -hmm. but they only have a tiny little roof. Yeah. You know, so there's just not enough roof space, even though they live in the open plains and there's wide sun. So let's just say your home is a great candidate. So going solar is amazing, but it is what is your strategy, which is what you just talked to people about earlier. So is cost savings your biggest strategy. So then no, make sure you're getting multiple quotes if you have people coming by the neighborhood but don't just get excited about what the lowest payment is. Look at the system sizes. Are they comparable? Is someone trying to sell you a system that's half the price? So you wanna make sure your home's a great fit. You wanna know is leasing or purchasing in my best interest right now based on my financial strategy. You, know, you wanna make sure you're working with the solar consultant that's asking you all the questions, foreshadowing for the future. And then once it's all designed now, okay, am I gonna finance it? Am I um getting it as close to the cash price as possible and my what's my total output financially over time and how can i maximize the system that i have now and then you want to know too are there some other incentives or rebates available you know based on your local utility or government state government some bonus stuff but just it is a big investment. It's a big decision. So make sure you take the time um, to get, make sure you're working with the right person, asking the right questions. Um, yeah, I just want people to not get like tricked with all the marketing. That's like yeah. such a big thing too. And um, this is about a, this could be about a two, three plus month process from, from initial education to appointment with the, the seller to site survey to installation and then once it's usually four, usually about four months from from four the time okay, that someone yeah, yeah. i would say from the time someone were to sign documents like let's say someone comes we go through the process they know exactly if they want to do a lease a loan we know what we're working with from a finances so we sign documents to actually start the work from the time the documents are signed to the time installations complete and the utility company gives permission to operate we call that pto that average nationwide with the quickly moving project is 90 days but the front end of it it might be you know a month that i'm working with someone to go back and forth strategy we're going to lease loan let's let's look at some different options before we sign so let's say a month of research 90 days of actual project and that's i would say on average but prepare for a little bit longer if you have an HOA or something else, because there's just an extra step of, of, you know, approval process and submitting the designs to them to make sure that we're in compliance. But we do all that stuff. A good solar company, you know, will walk you through and have the rep support with those, you know, conversations back and forth with the HOA. But yeah, I would say four months start to finish from when they start having consultations to a fully functioning operating system. Awesome. Thank you so much for yeah. taking a deep dive today. Action steps for those that are listening that have gone through and really analyzed all the different points here. You got fully equipped. Action steps would be book a call with Maureen if you're in a position where you're looking at solar, you've been quoted a couple of different times, you got some different marketers, you really don't know, you know, who's trying to who's in your who's in your best interest for putting these panels in place for the most efficient, you know, cost that's going to do the job that it needs to do over the next 
20 plus, 30 plus years. I think Maureen is the person that can really just go back and forth. And I know you even have helped some people that were getting quotes before and you'll do comparisons and you'll you know analyze like, look what they probably didn't tell you here. Look at this, look at this, look at that. Uh, and then you're fully transparent the whole way through. So I really do appreciate that because I know some of my clients have already uh, have spoken to you before. And then for my clients that work with me directly, if you need some help on the strategy side, give me a call, reach out and be like, hey, I'm about to close in on this deal with the financing, with the solar. I need to pair it with a strategy now so that I, I know that I'm making the right decision. Happy to do that phone call to make sure that that piece is, is solved for. So again, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.